Okay, we're back here live. This is Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of SAP Sapphire Now, live from Orlando, Florida. This is Silicon Angle's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. What a great morning. We had Bill McDermott's great keynote and fabulous new format on stage called The Cube. I mean, their anchor desk of tech athletes. We call it The Cube because it emulated our success here uh, in the press conference four years ago when we started The Cube. We called it the ESPN of tech. Well, SAP had up on stage their own version of the ESPN of tech with Bill McDermott, JB, um, uh, James Brown from CBS, who I didn't know went to Harvard, played basketball, Bill McDermott, big athlete himself, and they had uh, the NBA, the 49ers, and Armoral. And, and continuing that tradition, we have more tech athletes, and uh, SAP has made some, some big moves, and we have inside the cube here, Chris Hayden, who's the Vice President of Product Management for Ariba Networks, now part of SAP. SAP made a huge move last year, um, they're not, not afraid to make bold moves. They did it with S, uh, Sybase, they're doing it with HANA, they did it with Ariba, plopped down over $4 billion for Ariba. Chris, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks very much, great to be here. Yeah, so, so obviously you heard the monologue intro there. I mean, obviously SAP's not afraid to make big moves. Okay, so tell us about Ariba's course and kind of this new area. And you know, collaboration's been a theme that's been kicked around, kind of a punchline, really. What is what? But B2B, B2C, all sure. converging. Ariba's had great success in business networks. Yeah. And now that you're part of SAP, which is mobile, analytics, and databases, all the stuff that HANA's enabling, how does Ariba fit into the overall SAP family? Yeah, thanks. Well, we're truly excited to be part of the SAP family. We, we think that the Ariba Networks cloud source to settle suite, uh, coupled with our uh, business network, uh, really offers an exciting opportunity. Um, in terms of like the, the, the opportunity, the SAP ecosystem, you know, today, if we look at uh, the Ariba network, we're routing more than $460 billion of spend through the network uh, every year in over 190 countries. Um, but when you take a look at what the opportunity is with SAP, SAP um, touches 60% of all the transactions of the global 2000. And the addressable send for the global 2000 is a truly staggering figure, $12 trillion. So we just think of the latent opportunity, if you like, in, <laughs> uh, in our ecosystem to really add value to every single intra-business collaboration via the network. So we heard from um, the press conference here, the global press conference, uh, Jed York from the 49ers talking about the fan experience and how SAP's helping, and essentially we're going to use business intelligence and analytics to eliminate the hassles of buying, yep. right? Yep. That's a consumer experience in a stadium. Sure. People can relate to not wanting to get up uh, and miss the game or go wait in line for the bathroom. I guess you can't bring the bathroom down to the seat, but you know these kinds of experiences is, is a consumer experience. On the business side, there are those same opportunities. Can you share with, with the audience what are some of those things that are new opportunities for transactions sure. that didn't exist before? Absolutely, thanks. And you know, we totally believe that the buying experience for the end user within a business needs to be exactly the same as the buying experience as a consumer, right? And we also believe that the, the nature of the community effect, um, just like you have on Facebook for your commerce community, I mean for your social community, your, your social graph, needs to be the same uh, capability on the business side as well. So specifically in how we're looking to address that, we've got some really interesting ways in which we're just not going to leverage the technology but we also want to leverage the power of the network or the community. You know, the first is thinking about uh, uh, better buying. And when we talk about better buying, there's an interesting fact as well from Hackett, almost 40% of spend is ad hoc in large corporates. And so Ariba, we announced just recently uh, what we call Ariba Spot Buy. And this really enables buyers to publish their spot ad hoc requirements to the network for suppliers they know, but suppliers they don't know about. And when you think about today, we have a million suppliers on the network today. And with the power and of the SAP ecosystem moving forward, we really think this can be a great differentiator. And it, it helps buyers get better pricing, but it also helps suppliers really get more opportunities for business. You know, a real win-win. So that's one of the exciting areas that we think with the spot buy. Um, secondarily as well, um, along the spot buy act, uh, capabilities is really using the profile of sellers on the network to be able to, if you like, somewhat be prompted to buyers automatically. So when a buyer wants to go in for an event, we can automatically match their profile in the same way as you think about Facebook, someone you met in high school, 
How about the opportunity to uh, supply materials? And we have a number of use cases of suppliers um, who've, who've done some great matching and growing, you know, really interesting businesses um, from the ability to have recommendations from the Ariba network. Why did, why did SAP buy Ariba? Back, at, you know, back in the day, they pumped in a lot of cash. What, what was the one reason that they bought a, a Ariba for? Uh, one reason. No, just like the main core reason. I, I, I the think core the, the, the core reason is the, 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 the proven scalability and the vision around intra-business collaboration with the power of the Ariba network. I think SAP saw that Ariba had the number one cloud source to settle procurement suite, which very really complements their own existing offering. And number two, just the potential of unlocking collaboration, not just in procurement, but in finance and supply chain, in, in human resources, sustainability, across a business network, is, is truly the next generation in the network economy. And I think that's a big part of the acquisition. And, and obviously their focus on mobile has been huge, right? Yes. In analytics. Yes. I mean, we were at Sapphire just, you know, 2011, a couple of years ago, and you know, it's pretty clear, mobility and analytics, we called it fast data back at the time. Yeah. They coined that term here in theCUBE, but you know, now it's exploded. You've got SSDs, you have server-side SSDs, you have SSDs in the devices. So, you know, the ability to get stuff to the edge of the network pretty fast, it kind of changes your game a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. You guys are a connected network. Correct, um, correct. So how does that mobility play? What has it done to your business? And what are some of the things that you can point to saying, hey, here's some things that are, that are a kick butt for us? Well, well, what it does is I think it's opened up a whole new community of users. I mean, and uh, it also really opens the world up more. Um, what we're seeing, particularly in the Southern Hemisphere, is the laptop is being bypassed. Right, the PC is being bypassed, it's going to smart devices and to tablets. And so just that whole ecosystem of users there just presents a whole you know, great opportunity for us in some of the greatest, uh, fastest growing markets in the world. So I think that, that mobility angle is number one. Number two is, quite honestly, we can just piggyback over the fantastic mobile platform that SAP has. Um, when we are, if you like, an independent company, we would have to build some of that or partner with some of that. Now with SAP, we really think we can just accelerate that mobility and the beautiful user experience to everyone. You know, SAP's made some bold moves. And if you look at some of the moves they've made, Ariba's been around for a while, so Silicon Valley's uh, success story. Yep. Um, and, but it was built back, you know, when B2B networks were, you know, build your own T1s, build your own data centers. Right. Um, and, and another company, Sybase, which was, you know, actually pioneered the database, had, to, and then they, you guys, they transformed themselves. But now in the new equation, in memory, and network-based commerce on the B2B side is a real strategic asset. Uh, it, it, we, that's, uh, we're just so excited. You're talking about mobility. When we think about the network, think about the network as it's being open. We want to connect to every system. We think it needs to be comprehensive. We need to have as much collaboration. But just as importantly, once you have a lot of collaboration and a lot of um, trading partners, it needs to be intelligent. It needs to be able to take the transactional data, it needs to be able to marry up the relationship data, the commerce graph, so to speak, and add intelligence to it. And we just don't think there's any other better capability or technology out there to really transform the latent information and knowledge in the network than HANA. Yeah, and I think the cloud story is interesting too. I mean, what's happening here is that, and we were talking earlier on the on the cube, but you know, cloud is changing. So Hana has been kind of a obviously a force that's driving some of the strategy change in cloud. Does SAP be a cloud provider? Do they use their own cloud? What's going to go on? I mean, Hana is an element for cloud providers. Sure. She said, should they compete directly with Amazon? So there's some disruption at the ecosystem level. Yes. So what have you heard? Positive. Uh, and potentially challenges for SAP in the ecosystem and the business model? Well, uh, I, I don't see them as challenges, I actually see them as opportunities. I mean, uh, I remember either Jim or, or Bill mentioned at one of the keynotes, a big part is giving our customers choice. Choice of deployment mode, whether that be cloud or on-premise. What we still see is the network intersects the two, whether it's cloud or on-premise. Um, customers can really now focus on outcome rather than deployment methodology. And so, you know, we, we see really exciting challenge, uh, opportunities uh, are massive there for us. I mean, bringing together our cloud, I mean, SAP is a massive cloud player now. I don't think that message has really got out to the real world. SAP is significant, second to yeah. none probably, in terms of business to business cloud. Yeah, and we saw earlier Jeff Kelly on from Wikibon quoted the New York Times when, when Vishal was quoted that SAP's running some customers' 
biggest clouds that actually are bigger than Salesforce.com's entire cloud. Yeah. I'm not sure which he was, who he's referring to there. Do you, does there a name there? I, like I have Have you know no anything? scoop there. I don't know that one. <laughs> I'm, I'm not in that loop. Um, did you watch the press conference from the sports uh, panel? Oh, uh, that was that was really exciting. It was good fun, wasn't it? What'd you think about uh, those guys up there? Jed, Jed York's a pretty impressive young guy, isn't he? He, uh, he is. I mean. Uh, he makes some of us look, he just turned 40 and he's running the 49, it's, isn't that pretty amazing? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I think it just shows the innovation and how they're really trying to link. They're taking a different view, that's what I love. They're looking at their customers all the way through that value chain and how they're linking together is really, I mean, it's a truly modern, amazing. I mean, they've transformed, and the 49ers is interesting, and this is something we could talk about. And I try to get the question in there, but they kind of didn't go there. But one of the things I wanted to talk about was, and kind of just a little bit, was transformation. I mean, the 49ers, you look at that transformation of that organization, they went from you know, scandal to complete modernized, young management team, Kitty and you, ex-Facebook um, CFOs over there heading up the charge. You know, Harbaugh's legend, uh, you know, from Palo Alto um, and Stanford. So, so that's cool. That back office has got a new stadium going on. So his view is very clear, user experience. And what I found interesting is, is that that's the challenges that IT guys face. Mm -hmm. they're, they're looking to be the 49ers of IT. They're looking for, you know, how do I transform and turn into a younger, hipper, faster, more agile infrastructure? And so the only way to do that is to have speed, have networks. I mean, this kind of mirrors a faster version of the old days with the extranets connected. Right. Um, what's your take on all well, that? Well, I, I think it just totally complements this business network story. Um, you know, you connect once and you have access to the whole ecosystem, but not just for one type. This is what we really want to get excited and, and get people to understand. You can do it to discover new business. You can do, do, do it to deliver new business, and you can also do it to get paid for your business. And one of the recent things we're also looking to, to take this next level innovation, there's a huge amount of you know, upturn and disruption as well uh, in the financial payments markets, you know, with the squares and the, and, and the PayPal's changing. I mean, just last week, we also announced our own uh, B2B uh, uh, payment solution called the Reba Pay, where we've partnered with uh, Discover Financial Services to bring the, the power of their global network and infrastructure with the Ariba network to add a really differentiated offering um, into payments. Just a whole new, if you like, from a paper-based, check-based process to an electronic in your account, pay faster with better reconciliation. Totally transformational again, across the whole supply chain, whether you're big or small. So final question on this interview here with theCUBE, uh, Chris, is you know, obviously startups kind of predict the future. You were part of one and you joined Ariba through an acquisition. We, we, you mentioned that before we got on the camera. Um, but you see Square out there with the payments. You see the, the social media. You see the gamification. You know, these are network effects. Yeah. And you know, the virality of this new market, it's a connected system, it's distributed. This is not new to, to, to people at Ariba who get right. this. Right. Um, so obviously startups kind of let the whales kind of figure out what to do and then they integrate it in, we're seeing it here. What is next for Ariba? And as, as you guys talk to savvy executives, collaboration is there, but collaboration has just been overused as a punchline. I mean, it's like, ah, collaboration, yeah, we need to collaborate more. That's like saying, yeah, I need better judgment. Right, right, you know, It's like, come right, on, who right. doesn't need more collaboration? Yep. So, break it down, what's real about the collaboration right now going forward? What's really real is we, 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 we're uniquely poised here, and, and, and why is it? because, as you point out, it's not just the collaboration, we just want, don't want to get bad collaboration faster. We need to add value. It's all about putting intelligence in the network, about behaviors of what you've done, what you're doing, and, and overlaying predictive reporting, predictive analytics, to really give people visibility on what's going on. And we think we have a supplier info net, which can take over 150 sources automated. If you know, if you know, heaven forbid, there's another tsunami somewhere in the world. You never want that, but that happens. Automatic alerting and notification of some key trading partners that may be affected somewhere in your supply chain. And oh, by the way, here's half a dozen more that can help you. That type of information, that type of analytics, that type of predictive, that's the next power of the, the network. You can't get that on a single connection to a small part of your community. So more connections, more data, more intelligence. Yes. That's what you're saying. Okay, great. Good. Ariba, part of SAP, big bold move, $4 billion plus acquisition. We saw it with Sybase, we see it with HANA, these big 
pieces of, of engines plugged into the new SAP powering business. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. This is exclusive coverage from Sapphire Now. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE, we'll be right back after this short break.